What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are installing an OEM fuel door release lever on my Mazda V2000. Now my truck is a base model truck so it came with nothing. All you have to do to open your fuel door is basically get your key, unlock it and pop it open. But some of the higher trim levels like the SE5 and the LE5 and, and whatnot, they came with this optional kind of fuel door release lever that you can flip up and it'll open your fuel door, which I think is really neat. Uh, I didn't want to go with an aftermarket one. I was lucky enough to find an OEM one. So I'm going to show you everything that comes with that. And then I'm going to show you the things that I'm going to have to do to install it on my truck. It's not really uh, hard to get this installed, but it is a little time consuming, mainly because I do have some aftermarket carpet, a couple other stuff that I put in place since I got this truck, which might get a bit in the way when I'm installing this new thing. But let me go ahead and show you everything that comes with the little kit and everything that you're gonna need and then we're gonna move on to the truck to install it let's do it and here it is guys this is all it is basically if you really count it it's gonna be basically four pieces you're gonna have your actual bracket with the lever this is what you pull up to release the fuel door uh two 10 millimeter bolts and then a big cable that has another cable inside of it that actually activates the door to get released um, this one end there's gonna be a little round end this is what goes added into the actual plastic inside of the fuel door and then this part is what goes into the bracket and then once you get it all installed you'll be able to just pull the lever and then open your fuel door on that end and since my truck is just too low to do it as is i do have to lift it so we're going to go ahead and lift the truck if you have a factory uh height you don't have to do this you can basically just get underneath the truck and take all of this off uh, but again mine is lower so we're gonna have to lift it so let's get it up in the air All right guys, so the truck is up in the air and I try to get it as high as possible because we are gonna be underneath there. It's gonna be a little bit easier for me to record. But first things first is we are gonna have to remove the seat just because again, I have aftermarket carpet. So a lot of the area here that would usually kind of be exposed, it's not exposed at the moment. So I will have to most likely kind of take a lot of these little trim pieces off, peel the carpet back as much as possible so I can find the holes that I need to put this adapter on. So with that in mind, we're gonna start taking all of this out and then I'm gonna show you where to put it. All right, and with the seat out of the way, basically we are now left to just take a little bit of this trim. Again, I'm gonna have to take this trim off and then just so I can show you a little bit better back here, this is my back trim as well. So this, most people don't have this on their trucks. I'm lucky enough to have one of mine. So I will have to kind of lift this up and find the spot where I need to uh, basically pass the cable through uh, on the cab to the outside. But let's get this off as well. You might have to remove your seat belt, the bottom one, 17 millimeter, 14 millimeters for the seats, uh, a Phillips screwdriver for the little edge here. So. All right, guys, and with my trim out of the way now, I'm gonna show you here if I lift up this one, which we might not even need to lift it up or if you don't have it, then you don't have to worry about this part. But basically, you see this little plug here? That's the one we need to remove because we need to pass the cable right through it. And then if we lift up right here, the rest of my carpet, let me lift it up here real quick. And we looked, there's one of the holes and right over there is the second one. So those two holes are the ones we need. So we are gonna try to figure out exactly where they land here and try to cut a hole through here. All right guys, so I made a little cut into my carpet here. Honestly, I think I'm gonna have to make this a lot bigger just because the carpet is not a perfect fit. Like it doesn't fully follow all the lines of the truck. So this area is supposed to sit honestly a little bit lower just cause it's lower in here. Uh, but most likely I'm gonna have to trim a little bit more of this just so it can sit properly where it needs to go. Cause it does sit very low, very close to the frame or the bottom of the cap here. I'm afraid this is not gonna be enough. So since the bracket was a little bit rusty, I decided to sand it down and hit it with some paint. So here we have it. We are waiting on the paint to dry and uh, I need to do actually another coat here in the front and maybe another one in the back just to make it nice and even and all black. So once this is drying, we're gonna move on to the truck and put this on there. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and run the cable. Now, like I said before, to run the cable, we do have to remove this plug here. So we are gonna take that one off and then the cable needs to run underneath the carpet. So I have to get my carpet out of here. Oh, I got stuck again. Get my carpet out of here and run it through where it's gonna go more or less. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to the back. So let me just get this little plug on this side 
so we can start running it. So we got the plug out and the easiest way is just to kind of push it from the inside out uh, with a flathead, that's the easiest way to get it out of there. So now that we have it out, we're gonna run our new cable right into that same spot, let's do it. And if we look here uh, through the bed in the back of the cab, you're gonna see that's exactly where we popped that out. So we are gonna have to run our cable in there. This end is the one that needs to go inside. And then we are gonna have a small little plastic clip here and our little rubber gasket right here. This is the part that's gonna go right into the spot that we took the old one out. And then everything else from here, this plastic tabs, you can kind of move them around as you need to. And I'll show you exactly where along the frame we need to put those because they need to go basically from this end all the way to the other end where the gas cap is. So let's do it. All right, guys, we did things out. Uh, if you are putting this on a B2000 like I am, your first issue is gonna be that the plug actually, since this mechanism came from a B2200, this plug right here is actually the wrong size compared to the B2000. The B2000 is a little bit bigger. I don't know why, but it is a little bit bigger. So you will have to either mess with the factory plug that was in there and, and pass this through it. Or in my case, I have this grommets. Uh, I basically ended up using the 7 8 All right, so right there is the grommet, the 7 8 uh, grommet that I use. And we're gonna pass the cable right through it because once you pass it through it, this portion here, actually sticks to it very well. It doesn't come off, I already tested it. So that is gonna be my solution for this. Again, another way you can go about it is to basically grab the original grommet that you took out of it and uh, just kind of feed the cable through it. That would be another good solution for that. But. Once you have your cable right through inside of the cab, now we're gonna follow the cable and there's gonna be this little hole right here, right below the hole for the seat bracket. I have my sound deadening on place, that's why it's kinda of hard to see, but you can see it right there. That's where this little clip goes and you're gonna put that in there. And then once it's in place, then you're gonna route the cable through it, basically because it kinda of does a little loop that goes this way into the bracket itself here. Now I'm still waiting for the bracket to dry from the paint, so we're not gonna do that part. I'm gonna move on to the bottom and start routing the cable through the frame. So I'll show you where to put that on. And underneath the truck, the first place you're gonna put this on is gonna be a little hole here along the frame that holds the bed. And then if we move down here, you can follow this frame. You'll see holes right along it. If you can see my finger here, that's exactly where this plastic clips need to push into. So this whole cable is gonna run along this frame go all the way to the top behind the gas tank and make its way all the way to the wheel well over here on the passenger side, which then we need to take the plastic off of there to then make the hole that we need to so we can put it and attach it to the actual door. All right, here we are looking underneath the truck and here we are looking at the frame. You can see one clip went right there. You can see it from this side as well. One right at the top of the drive shaft. We wanna make sure it's not gonna get caught in the drive shaft at all. And then from here, we are gonna pass all of this cable through the top of the tank right to the other side uh, because there are no holes here to plug it in. This actually, this clip is gonna plug in on that side, but we need to make sure it goes through the top here all the way to the other side. There are no other holes here on the bottom on this side of the frame, so there's nowhere to push it into on this side. Once you pass it uh, on top of the tank and everything, there's a small little hole here. Put one of the clips here, and now we're gonna route the cable here towards the front, I'm um, sorry, towards the back. And you should have basically two metal clips. There's one here and one here on the top. You should have those, those are kind of built into the bed. And then the cable is gonna be routed just along the frame here, all the way to those two clips. And I have another little plastic clip here that goes into the top here of the plastic. All right guys, so now we have to drill a small hole in here. And if you can see in here, hopefully you can kind of see, there's already a bit of an outline where the hole's supposed to be. You can kind of see that little round area there. Um, that's exactly where we need to drill. Now my initial thought was, let's just take this plastic out and that way we can kind of drill it outside and everything, but after trying to take it off, trying to take all of this off, 
uh, it seems like it will be a more hassle to do that and especially because you have to kind of move these hoses out of the way and everything and uh, I can tell you they're pretty in place right now they're not moving they're not really moving anywhere so instead of going through all that hassle what I'm gonna do is I did remove the two little clips here so I can have access to here and then I do have a small drill that kind of fits in there here it is so I am gonna just kind of hit it from an angle and drill that hole through there and I'm hoping that's gonna be enough because I'm telling you trying to take this little plastic piece out it is not gonna be uh, easy to do uh, as you would hope so and there we have it guys we did it did work this way I was able to make that hole in there I'm not exactly sure yet if that's the right size I think it might be a little bit smaller so uh, you're also kind of able to hit it from the back here you can see right there on the top if you can get your drill back here too that's another spot you can do it but I would recommend going from this way if possible first just so you know where the hole is and then once you make it go ahead and and do it from the back of it so that way you can make that wider if you need to right now the drill bit that i used was a one quarter drill bit so i'm gonna test this see if it works if not then i'm gonna go just a little bit bigger and that should be enough for this but yeah we're looking good here and there you have it we have made the hole just slightly bigger just enough to fit the little bracket that holds the fuel door in place and that little ball you see right there needs to slide right through it so let me show you here just like that you slide that through it and obviously I need to put take this bolts off and put it back in there but once you have that slid through you put this back in place you make sure this is able to lock by itself and then inside once we put the other bracket it's gonna pull on this which then is gonna release the fuel door without you having to actually come in and unlock it so that's pretty neat let me go ahead and finish up this part and then we can move inside now that the bracket is also fully dry you can see that here we have it all nice and painted black. So now we're ready to move and put that inside of the truck. All right, y'all, and now back inside of the cab, I basically came in and put the bracket in place. Again, my carpet does not fit the best. So what I did to kind of make it fit here was basically cut a big hole to have this top portion of the bracket show up. And then everything else was underneath it. Uh, and then you can see here, this is our lever. You pull it up and it opens the uh, gas cap over there so it all it is all working good so we are basically ready to just bring the seat back in place and put it in place but yeah this is how it looks it's going to be kind of hidden and then if you just pull it up inside it'll basically just pop open and you're able to get to your gas tank uh, you can close it your key still works the same way so you didn't lose that capability but it's just easier so you don't have to use your key if you don't want to you just pull it up and it pops open. So there you have it guys, that's how you install the fuel door release. Now again, this is an OEM part, so there's really not a link I can give you for you to go and find one. Uh, really, it all is gonna come down to either you can find it on Marketplace potentially, or get lucky at a junkyard and find these pieces. Kind of like what I do sometimes, uh, I go to the junkyards, try to look for new trucks that have been put in the lot, and hopefully you'll find one to put in your truck. A secondary option that you could do is something maybe like a magnetic popper or something like that. I don't have a video on that necessarily, but I'm sure you can find some guides out there that will show you how to add that to your gas cap. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing, consider hitting the like button. Check out our website, flakegarage.com. We got links for parts that we can find that you can buy right now. Uh, and then uh, a couple of merch and all, all that stuff to support the channel if you choose to. But again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh,